So the, these are erigerons, and erigerons are in the aster family, so they're related to sunflowers, liadris, and asters, and many other things. And like so many of the members of the aster family, they've got uh, ray flowers, which are the white ones, and disc flowers, which are the yellow ones, and every little yellow bump is a separate floret, and every white petal-looking thing is also a floret. Okay, so, um, so the one on the um, left is a, a procumbens, uh, Origeron procumbens, Corpus Christi flea bang, and it only has one flower per stem. Okay, and the reason Origerons are so important is because they bloom so early. You know, what? Okay. Um, all right, so the reason they're important is because they bloom so early and they're providing uh, food for pollinators early in the season. And you, we use a lot of photos that have insects because they do attract a lot of insects, particularly little tiny insects. And so this slide we have because it, it shows you how easy it is to recognize a flea bank. The various species of flea bank can have 60 to 350 wow. white ray flowers. So right here, you can see all the ray flowers, and then here you can see this is an aster, and this is um, a, a, some, a flower similar to an aster, and how few, comparatively few, petals they have. So anytime you're out and about and you see something with thread-like white petals, which are really florets, um, it's a, probably a flea bay. I would venture to say it is a flea bay. And I'm not going to go over every slide because you can look it up. So, um, okay, we talked about that. So the, this one, the one that is most common and that we see around and sometimes in ditches and in patches is Philadelphia flea bay. And it has about 150 uh, of the white ray flowers. And the what, one way to recognize it is it has several flowers uh, per stem. And secondly, the leaves are clasping. So they have ears that come around the stem. And it's very hairy. And this is probably the one that you're going to see unless you're um, in a, you know, kind of a more exotic place like a prairie. Prairie shouldn't be exotic, but um, so a prairie or out, you know, out in the wild a little bit more. Going through these, um, and then before they bloom, the head, the stem is bent over, which is another interesting characteristic. You'll see them bent over, and then when they get ready to bloom, they stand up straight. Okay, the next one is Corpus Christi flea bang, and uh, it's procumbens is its species name, and that's because it is often um, laying down on the ground instead of growing up. So it is um, procumbens. Um, and, and that was the one we saw before. This is with the full head, and you can see that um, there's only one flower per step. And this one is more along coastal areas. Um, Flo Hanna, we do sell these. Flo Hanna sells them, we sell them at Wildscapes. Right now, this is the only flea bang that we do sell. And I think originally they came from down along Smith Point. There's a whole field of them. And then this is one of the prairie ones, slender leaf flea bang, um, original and tenuous. And uh, so this is the one that you are most apt to see on a prairie. There is one other prairie one. Can you tell me what tenuous means? Um, you know, I can't. I don't know. I didn't look that one up. I'll try to... There's some other genus with a tenuous. Um, I'll try to... Oh, I ought to be able to look it up before the meeting's over, so maybe I can get an answer to that. Um, and one thing I forgot to say about Philadelphia flea bay is it does spread underground, but it doesn't seem to spread long ways far away and then pop up another flower. It kind of makes colonies in an area. It will kind of fill in an area. So once again, if you have too many, pull them up, bring them here. Uh, Bruce Evans, very 
very generously brought about 24 of them over here, which I'll point out when we talk about the plants. So that's it. Thank you. Yeah.